Representative Elvis of the 99th. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, uh, minimum wage is a very emotional issue in, in different ways for different people. It's emotional for the single mother who is struggling to put food on the table for her children. And it's emotional for the small business owner who's trying to make payroll at the end of the month. But I think we've heard a lot of anecdotes on both sides of the, uh, of the debate tonight. And I want to take a moment to mention some of the, the statistics and, and other factors that are involved in this debate. Mr. Speaker, approximately 100,000 folks in the state of Connecticut, that's 10% of our entire workforce in the state, uh, do have minimum wage jobs. And with those jobs, they earn just above $17,000 a year working on a full-time basis. And that is $2,000 below the federal poverty limit. That puts not only a strain on these families and their own budgets, but it puts a strain on the state budget as well. Mr. Speaker, out of those 100,000 people, 83% of worker, minimum wage workers in the state are over the age of 20. Out of those 100,000 people, 77% work more than part-time hours. 50% are adult women, and another 50% have some college education or more. Now, since 2008, we've seen a new economy than in years past, and the focus is either on high-skilled jobs or service sector jobs, which could be restaurants, retail, home health care, and these are jobs that tend to pay minimum wage or very close to it. There's been a question about whether wages go directly back into the economy for these low-income workers, and that is without a doubt true. Economists on both sides of the aisle will agree that workers who make a lower amount of money, especially those at the very bottom of the income scale, anytime they earn a greater amount of money, that goes directly back into the economy. Economists on both sides of the aisle actually also agree that consumer spending is what really drives our economy. Mom and pop stores in each of our communities, whether it be the hardware store, the diner, or another type of establishment, they rely on sales. They rely on consumers to come in and spend. We need these low-income workers to be spending money at our community, uh, community stores and mom-and-pop uh, establishments. Mr. Speaker, there have been many studies that have shown an aggregate of studies throughout the country that show no discernible effect on employment when the minimum wage is, is raised. As with the economy during any point in time, good or bad, there will be jobs lost and jobs gained. Minimum wage does not have a, a discernible effect. Increases in minimum wage also do not affect jobs going over state borders, and studies have backed that up as well. Mr. Speaker, since the recession hit in 2008, low-wage sector jobs are seeing reductions in their yearly salaries, while salaries at the top end of the income scale are rising astronomically. Uh, income inequality is one of the greatest challenges of our time, and we need to help the folks uh, who are making the minimum wage to be able to afford the things that we can afford every day. So, Mr. Speaker, I am proud to stand in support of raising the minimum wage to $9 an hour, and I urge my colleagues to do the same. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you.